And now I would like to welcome Anne Burroughs, President and CEO of the Japanese American National Museum. Welcome, welcome everybody. I wish I could see all of you. I know that we have many people who've already joined and we certainly will be joined by others as, as the program continues. But I would like to welcome you all to the Japanese American National Museum. And of course, we can't gather in person in Little Tokyo as we'd like to, but because we're in a virtual space, it means that we can actually gather virtually from all over the world. And we know that we have um, folks joining us from, from all over. So, so please be welcome. Um, we are so grateful. We're so immensely grateful to the Consulate General of Japan in Los Angeles and to the Japan Business Association of Southern California for their partnership and support on our programming over this last year. Um, and thank you to those um, who tuned into our program part one of last week. If you missed the first part, it's available on our YouTube channel. Um, and the link to that will be will appear in the in the chat bar quite soon. And then today is the part two of that. Last uh, our first program covered the history of the relationship um, between Japanese companies and Japanese Americans and Japanese American companies. And then what we hope to do today is to look at how those relationships between Japan and Japanese corporations and the Japanese community have changed over, over the last 20 years. Um, and I'm also, I also know that our panelists will share with us our hopes, their hopes for the future. So all of our speakers today have been central in developing these relationships over many years. And I know that we will certainly learn from them. And I'm particularly excited to hear about what, what the future holds. Our next speaker, who is Consul General Akira Muto. Um, and certainly the Consulate General has been extraordinarily important in nurturing and shaping and building these relationships over the years. And certainly um, Consul General Muto has been, this has been his passion. This has certainly been, you know, it's, 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 and he's done it so well, and he's been so good at bringing everybody together. So um, Consul General, I'm going to ask you to say a few words, and then I'm going to bring Norm back into the program. Hey, thank you, Anne. Uh, well, uh, first of all, I would like to thank, uh, gentlemen, all of the today's uh, participants, uh, our panelists, uh, for participating in this program. I attest to the role the Japanese Americans have played in the process of the, in the progress of the United States uh, US Japan relationship, as well as for the Japanese businesses and for the Japanese community. Uh, United States and Japan are strong partners on many global issues, including the fight against the climate change and the whole spectrum of innovation, including the new domains of cyber and outer space. Japan's collaboration with Southern California have always been and will continue to be uh, models for the US and beyond. And we look forward to further collaboration with Japanese Americans in creating such a model for hydrogen value chains. In Southern California, Japan is the number one investor nation with 86,000 jobs created and 40,000 jobs created in LA County. It would be a tremendous contribution to the local community if Japanese business considers ways to create more jobs with their cutting edge clean technology and possibly provide job training for green jobs, as Toyota did in the 90s in Crenshaw neighborhood. Since the economic divide is the most urgent issue in the United States and in Southern California, uh, the Japanese business community can help our friends by paying attention not only to the value of the investment, but also to the issues of social economic justice for low income communities. Japanese American suggestions in these efforts would be much appreciated. After all, it is a safe and prosperous Los Angeles and California that encourages Japanese business to come, come here and become successful. And it is the United America that ensures peace and stability in the world rather than a chaotic and divided America. So I look forward to today's discussions and exploring together the ways 
in which collaborations between the Japanese American community and Japanese businesses can be further expanded and enhanced in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Consul General, um, for, for those words. And, you know, thank you again for the partnership. Our program wouldn't be possible if, if it weren't for you. So um, I'm now going to ask um, Secretary Mineta to come in and say a few words. Um, Norm has, of course, been at the center of building and nurturing and shaping so many of these critical relationships. So I'm going to um, welcome Norm. Um, Norm, over to you. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Consul General uh, Muto for uh, helping host this uh, session today, as well as to thank the um, Japanese Business Association of Southern California for their participation in also co-hosting to today's program. There's no doubt that we are proud as Americans, but we are also very proud of our Japanese ancestry. And so whatever we can do to help promote that relationship is something that benefits people on both sides of the ocean. I think early on, the Japanese corporations were more interested in establishing, getting established uh, with their relationship with companies in the majority community. And to that extent, the uh, Japanese American population, I think was neg neglected, except for the Bank of Tokyo of California and the Sumitomo Bank. And even in those cases, even as they were trying to get uh, the accounts from uh, the Japanese uh, businesses, the Nisei businesses, Issei businesses, uh, they were willing to employ people, but they never had any management of branches uh, by the Niseis until uh, much later in, in, the, in the progress. But they have done well since, and I know that the future is really very, very uh, important and uh, is going to be successful. And we owe a lot of that success to Senator Dan Inouye, who recognized the importance of uh, Japan as a link to, uh, to Asia uh, and uh, to uh, Irene Hirano uh, Inoue, who started to think um, about trying to promote US-Japan relationships. And she successfully did that through the establishment of the US-Japan Council so we owe both of them a great deal of debt for where we are today, but more importantly, as we look into the future. So again, because of this changing relationship, uh, we really have a very, uh, I think, very positive picture for the future. And I wanna thank also all of the panelists and participants in uh, today's program. So again, uh, uh, although it's a little late, we uh, want to wish everybody a, a, to have a terrific 2021. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Norm, for, uh, for those remarks and for just, again, underscoring how important the future of, of these relationships um, is. So I, I'd like to bring on our, our next speaker. Um, so to start us off before we go to the panel discussion is Consul Koji Imai, 
who will share a brief presentation on the activities, contributions, and investments of Japanese companies in Southern California. Consul Imai manages a very large portfolio of activities related to environmental issues, green technology, business climate, creative content industries, as well as a collaboration of public infrastructure projects between California, Arizona, and Japan. And then immediately after his presentation, um, our good friend Yuko Kaifu will, will come on. And we all know Yuko as the president of the Japan House, Los Angeles. Um, and she will kick us off on a larger conversation. And for those of you who are joining us who don't know who um, Yuko is, she came to Los Angeles in 2001 as a consul at the Consulate General of Japan in Los Angeles. There she worked on creating the Japanese American Leadership Delegation. And then in 2007, she joined JANUM as Vice President and continued to connect with Japan and the Japanese American community. And then after her tenure, she went to the Bank, where she was a Managing Director of Corporate Communications and CSR. And she joined Japan House in 2016. Um, Yuko will moderate our incredible panelists. We have Paul Yonamine, who wears many hats. Um, he's also been recently appointed as chair of the US Japan Council. And then we also have two of Janum's, two of our own governors, Tracy Doi and Yuichi Mutsumori. So it feels to me as though somehow all the doors lead in and out through Janum. So I'm going to now pass on the program to Mr. Imai to kick us off. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, and thank you for inviting me to be with you today. Japan is the largest source of foreign direct investment in Southern California and California overall. In Southern California alone, Japanese companies have about 2,500 locations and directly employ about 86,000 people. This has always been an important market and gateway to the U.S. Companies like Toyota, Honda, and countless others set up their first U.S. operations in the LA region starting in the 1950s. Just 10 years after World War II, many of the first and second generation Issei and Nisei were extremely valuable employees and advisors working for companies from Japan. Even after experience hardships in the U.S. due to their connection with Japan, their cooperation was the key to a smooth and successful entry into the U.S. market for many Japanese companies. At the time, the Japan Traders Club was started in 1960, which later became the JVA. And through the 1970s, many Japanese Americans were employed to help with legal issues, taxes, and accounting and marketing. In other words, the fundamental business knowledge to succeed in the U.S. And in the early days, Japanese Americans were also good customers for products from Japan and helped them grow the, their market. By the 1980s, Japan was succeeding worldwide and some people even expected it to become the largest economy in the world with a bigger GDP than the U.S. Politically, it became necessary to manage the trade imbalance by setting up more operations here. Japanese manufacturers coming to the U.S. were now joined by service companies from Japan. So now a lot of the accounting, legal, marketing, and advertising work was done by larger companies without any historic connections, connection to the Japanese-American community. Through the 1980s, the number of service companies from Japan, including Japanese banks, grew dramatically along with the foreign investment from Japan. And in those days, Japanese companies brought a lot of staff members over from Japan to manage their businesses. This was also the period of Japan's bubble economy. Very simply, the value of assets in Japan were extremely inflated, especially real estate and stocks. Much of that extra money in Japan was then invested all over the world. For example, in the late 1980s, about 70% of the real estate in downtown Los Angeles was owned by Japanese investors. At the peak of the bubble, Japan was investing about 18 to $20 billion per year in American assets. And there were many dramatic news reports warning that Japan was buying up the United States. 
Then, at the beginning of the 1990s, Japan's bubble economy began to shrink. All types of investment from Japan started to decrease, as well as the number of staff and executives being sent to California from Japan. At this same time, and into the 2000s, the efforts to create organizations like the US-Japan Council were finally realized. These sorts of friends were especially important at the time of slow economic growth, and they provide a balanced and reasonable opinion about Japan in the United States. And looking at current and future opportunities or business directions for Japanese companies in California, some areas of interest are green technology and the hydrogen society. Japan has a strong focus on bringing on green technology to the, to the US including the vision of creating a clean hydrogen society. Already there are demonstration projects on hydrogen powered transportation and port operations at the port of Los Angeles with Toyota Motors and Toyota Tsusho. And the LADWP is going to use a Mitsubishi power turbine to create the largest green hydrogen electricity generating station in the world. Entertainment and contents industries. Hollywood is still the world leader in these industries, and Japanese companies are active in sharing IP and contents and producing entertainment and electric games in Southern California. In general, California is a large and receptive market and is growing. It will continue to be a gateway to the US market for Japan. There will continue to be a large presence of Japanese companies in many industries due to the diverse and dynamic economy and positive attitude towards Japan's companies and products. Japanese businesses are expanding and growing again in the US. I mentioned earlier that at the peak of Japan's bubble economy in the late 1980s, Japan was investing up to $20 billion per year in the US. But more recently, the total amount of investment from Japan in 2018 was about three times the amount at the peak of the bubble economy. Japan invested $60 billion into the US in 2018, creating thousands of good jobs for American workers. I believe there are new opportunities for collaboration and partnership between Japanese businesses and Japanese Americans. I hope today's discussion will offer us a chance to explore even stronger and mutually beneficial relationships in coming months and years. Thank you. Thank you, Consul Imai. Um, thank you, Anne, uh, for a very nice um, introduction about me. And uh, Secretary Mineta, Consul General Muto, your presence always cherish us up. So thank you. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us um, today. My name is Yuko Kaifu and I have um, the honor and excitement of uh, serving you as your moderator of this exciting panel discussion. Um, as um, Anne was talking about, uh, this is the part two of our series, uh, Bridging and Building Japanese American, Americans and Japanese Corporations. In part one, which was held um, a week ago or so, um, we discussed more or less the historical overview of the relationship um, and picking up, uh, taking up a, a few prominent individuals like uh, Akio Morita, who uh, forged a closer relationship with Japanese businesses, between Japanese businesses and Japanese American community, particularly when this Japanese American National Museum was being created. Today, we want to focus more on recent um, history developments of the relationship perhaps over the last 20 years or so. And uh, uh, we do have um, the lineup of um, ex ex distinguished and, and amazing panelists who have been leading um, uh, efforts to build closer relationships between Japanese businesses and Japanese American communities and even more for overall relationship between Japan and the United States. And uh, let me introduce um, each one of them. Ms. Tracy Joy is a chief financial officer for Toyota Motor North America, responsible for accounting, finance, tax, corporate strategy, and planning. As an executive member of the North American um, Management Committee, Tracy sets strategy and drives initiatives to increase competitiveness in manufacturing, sales, marketing, digital technology, and supply chain. She serves on the board of National Asian Pacific Islander Chamber of Commerce, 50-50 women on boards, 
and the board of Japanese American National Museum. And she's a former board um, member of uh, US Japan Council. And uh, Mr. Yuichi Mitsumori is um, president of Japan Business Association of Southern California. We call it uh, JBA. He's also the head of Japanese Corporate Banking West of MUFD Union Bank and head of Los Angeles branch MUFD Bank covering Japanese institutional clients in West Coast. He serves on the board of governors of Japanese American National Museum and board of directors of Japan America Society of Southern California. Prior to his arrival in Los Angeles in June 2019, Mr. Mitsumori spent two years and a half in New York as Deputy Chief of Staff for MUFD's operations in the Americas region, following a number of managerial roles in Tokyo, London, and Singapore. Mr. Paul Yonamine is Executive Chairman of Central Pacific Bank and Chairman and CEO of Central Pacific Financial Corporation. Prior to joining Central Pacific Financial Corporation, Mr. Namine held various leadership positions in the United States and in Japan, including, but not limited to, President and Country General Manager of IBM Japan, President and CEO of Hitachi Consulting, and President of KPMG Consulting in Japan and Managing Partner of the Hawaii Operation of KPMG. He also served for, uh, served for two years from 2006 as the senior advisor to the mayor of the city and county of Honolulu. Mr. Namine currently serves on the board of directors for Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation of Japan, the Pacific International Center of High Technology Research, among others. He is, of course, the chair of the board of US Bank Council. Welcome, uh, all of you. Thank you so much for uh, taking your time out of your very busy schedule. So um, the first of you, you both, uh, all of you have very distinguished career and your commitment. You have a great track record of contributing to the community and uh, US Japan um, relations. So uh, I want you to uh, share your personal story, history, your observation, your, your company, whatever you like to talk about. Um, and I'd like uh, to turn to Tracy first. You have always been one of the most uh, senior, successful Japanese American uh, female um, uh, business leader. So, um, and you've been with Toyota at the very senior position for so many years, and it would be interesting to hear your perspective. Thank you, Yuko. First, I would just like to thank um, the Japanese American National Museum for hosting this event with the Consul General. And uh, I really enjoyed Consul General Muto's remarks as well as Consul Imai san It's uh, interesting to hear that background. And of course, thank you, Secretary Mineta and And for hosting this event. It's a pleasure to be with all of you today. And we could go to the next slide. I just thought that maybe a little bit of background uh, might be helpful for today's conversation. I grew up here in Los Angeles and I say I'm Yonsei, but really technically I'm Sansei and a half. My father was Nisei, my mother is uh, Sansei. And I had certainly exposure to a, a very warm and loving Japanese American family, very close to my grandparents, went to Japanese school on Saturday, although I was not a good student. And my husband and I definitely want to have our children have exposure to the culture, and both of them participated in the Yonsei basketball program, where they were able to travel, all of us as a family, with over 100 of us traveling at a time. They got to stay in a Japanese home as a homestay, which I think was a wonderful exposure to the culture. And then I was very fortunate to be part of the Japanese American Leadership Delegation, JALD, sponsored by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Japan Foundation in 2010. Uh, so that was an extraordinary exposure and experience to uh, Japan government, Japan business and culture. I have definitely enjoyed being a volunteer and have a long relationship with Janum, starting off on the dinner committee and uh, gradually getting more involved and very fortunate that Toyota also believes in giving back to the community. 
So I've been able to be involved not only with JANUM, but also US-Japan Council and other organizations. So, you know, I, I would say a great weekend for us as a family is to visit JANUM. The kids can see their names on the steps in front and uh, spend time with their grandparents and have a nice bowl of ramen down the street. We can go to the next slide. I would just share from Toyota's perspective, we have been based in Los Angeles for a lot of years and then had recently made the move to Texas as we integrated our organization with manufacturing. And coming out of this pandemic, it has required a lot of agility. Our 14 North America plants, we closed for seven weeks, but we were able to make a phased uh, implementation safely. Our dealers have had to go contactless and really have embraced digitization. And the customer demand, we are an industry that has been fortunate, has been greater than the supply. We are very hopeful that with the vaccine that we could see um, promise in the near future for everybody to safely return to a more normalized day-to-day -day, uh, lifestyle. The next slide, just to say that there's a lot to be excited about as we go forward. Imai San talked about the investment in the US and in North America. Toyota has recently completed a five-year commitment of $13 billion in investment over a five-year period. That includes these new products, but it also includes an expansion of our manufacturing footprint. And on the next slide, our investment in the future of mobility really looking at mobility as a service through Connected. A lot of us are looking forward to when we can have an autonomous vehicle that takes us to wherever we want to go. Uh, and when we look at shared technology, the e-palette is something that we want to reveal at the Olympics. And from an electrification perspective, Imai San talked about uh, our project on hydrogen fuel. We have a project portal at the LA ports where we have hydrogen electric heavy duty trucks that are able to have drayage with zero emissions. So it's something we're proud of and continuing to invest. And the last slide is we are celebrating our 30 millionth vehicle produced in the United States. This is the Sienna and it's 100% hybrid. So a lot to look forward to. Thank you, Yuko. Thank you, Tracy. Wow, how amazing. We're lucky to have Toyota. We're lucky to have you, Tracy. Thank you. So our, um, uh, I'd like to turn to um, Yuichi Mitsumori. Um, Mitsumori-san, I, I usually call you by, uh, by your last name, Mitsumori-san, but uh, let me call Yuichi today. So, uh, of course, you're the president of JBA, and JBA has been a locomotive for various um, programs in the past, but you're also the, at the very senior position of uh, MEFG um, Union Bank, and your bank has been uh, taking a lead in terms of uh, nurturing closer relationship with the community. So, uh, can, you, can you take the microphone? Um, thank you very much, Kai san uh, Yuko san uh, today. Um, um, the very uh, kind introduction uh, for me. And also, I need to highly appreciate the uh, uh, kind words from uh, Secretary Minera and uh, uh, Council General Muto. Uh, I'm Yuichi Mitsumori. As introduced, um, I'm an expert person uh, stationed in Los Angeles, uh, working in at the MESG Union Bank, and also uh, serving uh, the president of the uh, Japan uh, American uh, the Japan Business Association of Southern California. Uh, today, uh, it's very, a very good opportunity to speak out, uh, um, including my uh, background, history, and also uh, organ my organization belonging. So, uh, uh, you might have mentioned, in general, uh, Japanese corporation enter the U.S. market and create the jobs. Also, these jobs are not necessarily uh, for Japanese Americans, but are open to everybody, regardless of heritage. Uh, today, uh, many corporations support Japanese American community organizations through donations and pro bono service, including board and advisory duties, as I'm doing. But I personally believe that there is a lot, 
lot more to the relationships between Japanese corporations and the Japanese American society. So I'm so delighted to be here on this panel and discuss this topic today. Um, so um, I'm not a Japanese American, so I just focus on the history I'm working in the United States. Um, let me share a little bit about myself. Um, the Japanese American community relationship became an important part of my job when I, I moved to New York in 2016 for my new assignment in, in the United States as introduced. Uh, my team is responsible uh, for relationships and outreach to the com in the community. So um, this is a picture and now I'm showing from my first business trip to Los Angeles. It must have been early 2017. Uh, visiting our community partners was the highlight of the very short trip packed with the meetings. It's a very good exhibit on the second floor of the journal. Uh, since I arrived in Los Angeles uh, two years ago, uh, precisely uh, one year and eight months ago, I got even closer to the Japanese American community. Uh, learning about the community and history has been enriching both professionally and personally. It has been a rewarding experience serving on boards and getting involved with organizations like the Japanese American National Museum, uh, Japanese American Society of Southern California, and Japan House. However, however a small my contribution may be, I believe that it builds up uh, to reinforce the foundation of connecting between Japanese cooperation and the Japanese American community. Uh, let me move to the news, uh, next slide, please. Oh, it's, uh, I, I don't want to focus on my pictures. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Um, this is uh, um, the uh, uh, family tree of the uh, Union Bank I'm uh, working. And I, I'm going to briefly touch upon uh, MEFG Union Bank and the Japanese American community. Origin of our uni US business dates back to pre-war, supporting East Asian Japanese Americans. Our post-war comeback to the market at Bank of Tokyo, California, as introduced, uh, which was in 1952, uh, was only possible because the Japanese Americans raised funds necessary to clear regulatory requirements. Without the Japanese American uh, community, the entity circling red in, in, the, uh, in the central, uh, in the slide, uh, has not existed. Since then, the Japanese Americans has been our customers, colleagues, leaders, and partners. Uh, today, our partnership is stronger than ever, especially in the philanthropic, the philanthropic activities. Uh, thanks to our community partners, uh, we are able to help carry on heritage and offer learning opportunity to young people. This is an example. Uh, MEFG was one of the first corporations to participate in Tomodachi Initiative. Tomodachi MEFG is a reciprocal exchange program for high school students in Tohoku and Southern California. The top photo is myself making a presentation about the global business. Uh, the students visited the Union Bank branch in LA downtown. The other is our top management uh, in Tokyo, welcoming students from Southern California. Our employees spend time with students as host families, both in California and Japan. Next slide, please. Yes. Okay, yeah. This is, uh, this slide is uh, stands for community events. Um, these are some more pictures from another Bonsley event at Nisei Week. Uh, why I'm showing these pictures. That's because that I think having authentic experience and making people to people uh, connections make a great impact on viewpoint of Japanese cooperation towards this topic. It certainly influenced my views. So on behalf of today, uh, MEFG Union Bank, as well as the uh, Japan Business Association of Southern California, I'd like to just emphasize what uh, Japanese corporations is now are doing in Southern California to strengthen the ties uh, with the United States and the Japanese American communities nowadays. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Turn back to you, Kaipsa. Thank you, Yuichi, for a um, great um, um, presentation. We really think, uh, feel thankful to you, JBA, and of course, MUFG for a lot of contributions that we've been making. So last but not least, Paul Yonamire, um, uh, talking about bilingual, bicultural people, you, you really are one of the very few who, who are truly bi bicultural, bi bilingual. And, and you were born and raised in, in Japan. Your father was a prominent baseball player who, who was the first American baseball player in, uh, who played professional baseball in Japan. Uh, as I remember correctly, he was with um, Yomiuri Giants first and then two Nishi Dragons. And you, you, your upbringing was uh, at that time. So um, we be very interested to hear your story. Great, thank you, Yuko, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. And you know, first I'd like to, uh, you know, just say to Mr. Mitsumori, uh, MUFG has been a tremendous partner to the Japanese American community over many years, and uh, even for the U.S. Japan Council, which I had the pleasure uh, to be the new chair from January. MUFG has always been there uh, for the U.S.-Japan Council. And I just wanted to uh, extend my thanks uh, to you and all of your associates. Uh, so, you know, as Yuko mentioned earlier, I'm the chairman and CEO of Central Pacific Bank. And, you know, this bank has a very interesting history. We were formed 66 years ago by Nisei Japanese American War veterans, and it included the late Senator Daniel Inouye. And so this was a time when the uh, Nisei War veterans came back from Europe. They came back to Hawaii after doing some courageous battles and uh, they tried to get their life back. You know, they tried to get a house, tried to start a business and they couldn't get any loans. And so the Senator and a number of the veterans said, let's make a bank. And, uh, and they all got together. But the problem was that none of them really had a lot of banking experience. But it just so happened that one of the veterans had a good friend at the Sumitomo Bank of Japan, called that person, and Sumitomo immediately dispatched an expat to Hawaii and provided the war veterans with the expertise and the know-how in creating a bank. So this is very, a very appropriate story, I think, uh, for the theme of our Zoom call today. This was a very early successful example of how a Japanese company helped the Japanese American community. Naturally today, the bank is uh, here not just for the Japanese American community, but for all people in Hawaii. Today, the bank is listed on the New York Stock Exchange. We're a public company and doing quite well. Um, you know, I'm really delighted and honored also to be on the board of directors of the Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation. And, uh, and I get the honor of continuing the connection between Central Pacific Bank and the new Sumitomo Bank. Um, you know, as I um, mentioned earlier, uh, I became the chair of the U.S. Japan Council from January. And the U.S. Japan Council is led by an extraordinary leader today called Suzanne Basala. And uh, this is the organization that partnered with the U.S. Embassy in Japan on the Tomodachi operations after the Tohoku earthquake. So I think you can appreciate that the Japanese American community was very much involved in working with the U.S. Embassy in, in driving the operations of Tomodachi after the uh, March 11th Tohoku earthquake. Now, I'm a third generation Japanese, but I, I'm born and raised in Tokyo actually. And uh, as uh, Yuko mentioned, my father was Wally Onamine, a Nisei Japanese American who excelled in professional baseball in Japan and is today a Hall of Famer. Unfortunately, I didn't inherit his baseball genes. Uh, I inherited maybe my mother's business acumen and I've done relatively well. But, um, but you know, I, I often think about my father. He was a Japanese American who went to Japan to play baseball in 1951. And people were not very welcoming and were not very nice to him. Uh, but he tried, he tried his best to assimilate with his teammates and tried to be accepted by the fans. And fortunately he did very well. And over the years, the Japanese community, uh, the Japanese baseball community really welcomed him. 
And uh, he only had great things to say about Japan and the people of Japan. You know, over the last 40 years, I've worked very closely with Japanese companies here in the United States and in Japan. I have learned a great deal from my Japanese clients, but I've also done my best in the growth of the consulting industry and the use of information technologies such as AI and big data in Japan. I'd like to really thank the Consul General of Japan and JANUM for including me in this very important panel today. And it's an honor for me to speak in a venue where Secretary Norman Mineta uh, is presiding as well. So thank you, Yuko, Yuko back to you. Thank you both so much. Um, I did not realize the founding, a nice story about the foundation of the Central Pacific Bank or about your father. So, um, uh, and, and all your presentations uh, serve as a good segue to the next uh, question that I have uh, about uh, the development of the last uh, um, 20 years or so. And um, if, yes, if uh, you each can also unmute yourself and uh, put the screen back. I, let me uh, put things into a little bit of framework. Uh, I came here in 2001 as a consul at the Japanese Consul General's Office in Los Angeles. And, that, um, and one of the responsibilities that I was uh, charged with was to um, liaison with Japanese American community. But at that time, there was no Japanese American leadership delegation or no program or initiative. But a group of um, visionary leaders um, from uh, among Japanese Americans, like Senator, of course, Sen Senator Inoue, Irene Hirano. At that time, she wasn't still married with uh, with the senator, so I, I would say um, Irene Hirano, the president of Jana, um, and uh, um, Paul, Dr. Paul Terosaki, Mr. George Aratani, um, Tommy, you know, Henry Ota. They got together and uh, discuss the future of uh, the relationship between uh, Japan and Japanese Americans. And they sat down with the then Consul General Masa Kono um, and also had a different conversation with the then Ambassador Yozo Kato. And uh, so they, they decided to um, come up with a number of initiatives. And, and one of the, the brainchilds of uh, the, the discussion, um, outcome of, the dis uh, of, of those uh, discussions was that they create creation of Japanese American leadership delegation, uh, which was made into annual program. Um, Tracy was one of the delegates was invited to Japan at the, the 10th anniversary uh, delegation trip um, and also launched um, the uh, annual uh, meetings between Japanese uh, Consul General of Japan and Japanese American leaders, uh, as well as uh, Japan Business Network meeting, uh, currently hosted by um, US Japan Council but it was launched by uh, Japanese American National Museum. So a lot of things happened. And of course, uh, uh, US Japan Council was created um, in 2008. So 20, this past 20 years um, meant a lot to, to all of us, but uh, each of you might have different lead, different uh, impression about what happened and transpired. So I'd like to uh, start with Tracy. Thank you, Yuko, for that background, because uh, it is a really marvelous history. You should be so proud that you were part of that program for JLD. My reflections of the progress that has been made between Japanese companies and the Japanese American community. Um, first, maybe I could just do a little bit of a reflection. So Toyota was established in the US over 60 years ago, and probably at that time was much more reliant on bilingual Japanese Americans, Nisei. And ironically, my uncle, Paul Ozawa, was the first American that was hired by Toyota back then. He was the controller in charge of the finance operations back then. And I think that that was natural that there'd be that trust between um, a Japanese company and Japanese Americans and wanting to get things established. But as time moved on, I think that there was a, a move towards more self-reliance and relying on local Americans. And there was some distance uh, as generations passed. I also think grandparents and my parents uh, were really encouraged to be much more American and have a little bit more distance because there was so much prejudice post-World War II. So I think it is upon our generation to really reestablish and have that people to people relationship, which is why I'm so grateful for the JLD program in US 
Japan Council to foster that. I'm lucky though, on a daily basis that I can interface with Japanese national executives and foster those relationships um, and develop lifelong friendships that are based upon a lot of mutual respect related to dedication and the work ethic and knowledge, as well as uh, exchanging ideas on cultural traditions and great food. But through the JLD, when you talk about what are turning points, what are uh, events that have happened to help foster a stronger relationship between Japanese companies and Japanese Americans, I th do believe JLD is one of them. Uh, that was life-changing for me to be part of the 2010 class, if you will. So again, I wanna thank the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Japan Foundation for sponsoring that. Everyone had told us that that was gonna be a unique once in a lifetime experience, but I had already traveled to Japan through my work many times, but never had I been given the exposure of the education of the Japanese business, uh, entrance to uh, introductions to such senior leaders in the government. And it also was very eye-opening to recognize that there are so many similar issues that both countries are trying to address and still are. Economic, trade, environmental, supply chain, technology. We talk about women leadership, um, the challenge of aging population and the desire for strong talent for the future. So I, I really look to one of the benefits of that program is building a, a strong network of Japanese Americans across the nation that have a shared love of Japan and want to make a difference. And Paul highlighted one of them, you know, within 24 hours of the tragic earthquake, Everybody was on the phone, calling each other, uh, emailing, trying to figure out what everybody could do to try to help. And I think that gave hope and, and probably a stronger tie than we would have imagined that continues. Another is um, this network of trying to help Japanese businesses succeed in the US manifests itself with a network to be able to ask questions of, a company might be growing and looking for a specific skill set, but they're hoping that they can find somebody who has worked in Japan that might be bilingual. That's a unique skill set, but this JLD network can help open those doors. So I, I really encourage um, that ongoing investment. I think that that can make a big difference for generations to come. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tracy, for talking about JALD. Um, we do now have more than 200 um, former delegates, and uh, mm -hmm. we have a big family of uh, the alumni, um, and also in Japan as well. For the first few years, Japanese businesses and governmental people, uh, we're not quite sure who Japanese American delegation uh, would be, but then now they're waiting. And, and it's uh, too bad that uh, because of the pandemic, we have not been able to do it uh, last year. Uh, but um, yes, it's uh, going on, and it's um, the, the result is just so such a great investment, uh, return of investment on the part of the Japanese government as well as uh, the, the community. So thank you, Yuichi. Do, do you have your thought on the development, both from um, from the perspective of JBA and your company and yourself? Uh, thank you, Yuko-san. Um, different from Tracy, and I'm not a Japanese American, so I can say. Uh, the view is based on my personal history. So I just, uh, please allow me to speak out uh, based on the, my the business side. Um, in general, uh, Japanese companies have been exploring uh, overseas expansion since uh, almost uh, 20, 2000 to compensate that an impact of shrinking the population and uh, the aging society in Japan. So uh, Southeast Asia and North America uh, attracted the interest at the growth market. Uh, I see that this direction makes sense, both strategically and economically. The civic culture and the system, systemic differences uh, remain a major challenge for most uh, Japanese corporations. Uh, it's very uh, common sense that entry to a new market uh, takes much more than just investing in the factory and setting up the local entities. 
So it means that you have to truly understand the market, the demand, and local culture. So during the process, and many Japanese corporations realize the importance of being a good corporate citizen, particularly in the 21st century. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, thanks to the leaders, uh, as uh, Senator Miller mentioned and the Posa mentions, uh, like uh, later Senator Inoue and uh, uh, late uh, Irene Hirano Inoue, uh, Japanese Americans recognize the importance of grassroots efforts to strengthen the bilateral relationship over the Pacific, uh, which later led to the formation of the U.S. Japan Council. So I think it was around the time when Japanese corporation and the Japanese American community found each other to be an ideal partner to achieve their goals. So given our history with Japanese American community, uh, just a little bit uh, uh, allow me to explain uh, the example of MFG Union Bank. Uh, it was natural for MFG Union Bank to be in the center of the movement of the, to bond with Japanese American leaders. Our top management in Tokyo was also fully on board. Um, today, all our expert uh, colleagues in Los Angeles, as well as the visitors to the city uh, from our Tokyo headquarters, are strongly encouraged to visit the Japanese American National Museum and learn about the community and history. I'm pleased that also that MUFG's donation to the museum funds school visits and family festivals, making learning opportunities available to a wider audience beyond our employees. So, as a bottom line, I think the connection between the two parties uh, have diversified in the past 20 years. Uh, Japanese corporation and the Japanese uh, American communities are now interwoven at every level, uh, from organization to individual, also executive to junior employees. But that is, I think, the critically important for mutually understanding of the both sides. Thank you, Yuichi. You're right. Uh, the relationship has been um, diversified. Um, and interconnected um, and developing in many ways in, at many levels. So I think that it's very important to make it uh, the relationship resilient and stronger. So uh, Paul, your thought? Uh, um, let me start by sharing my personal experience. You know, when I first started work in 1979 in Los Angeles, uh, I worked for Yukuo Takenaka of Pete Mark Mitchell and Company, which is called KPMG today. You know, and, and uh, Southern California was a really hot market back then. It seemed like there was a new Japanese company setting up shop almost every day. You know, many of the Japanese businessmen back then, though, uh, they couldn't speak English um, and, you know, really had a tough time adjusting to the lifestyle in Southern California. And, you know, less alone setting up their business, you know, trying to get connected with customers and specialists and regulators. So they looked to Yuko and, and the rest of us for advice and direction uh, and did the same with other prominent Japanese Americans like uh, Sho and Tom Eno. Uh, Tom's on the Zoom call today. You know, there were other people like June Mori, Henry Oda, Bob Takeuchi and many others. Uh, and for the next several decades, there were very influential Japanese Americans in Washington, D.C., you know, like Senator Daniel Inoue. Senator Spark Matsunaga, and naturally Secretary uh, of Transportation Norman Mineta. You know, I believe that Japanese companies back then felt that there was an established platform of support and value from the Japanese American community. And, and I believe there was. Uh, it was a good source of business for some of us, but there was a genuine interest on the part of the Japanese American community to see companies from Japan succeed in the U.S given the common heritage and ethnic bond. Now, over the years, Japanese companies were successful in the U.S. and localized rapidly. You know, they, they were hiring more local American workers and establishing their own business network. You know, with the passing of Senators Matsunaga and Inoue and the completion of Secretary Mineta's term in public office, the Japanese American presence in Capitol Hill was not as pronounced. You know, I believe that Senator Inoue had the foresight of this happening, and so along with his wife, Irene, established the U.S.-Japan Council. The mission of the U.S.-Japan Council is focused in strengthening the ties of the most important bilateral relationship in the world, that of the U.S. and Japan. It is also the mission to develop the next generation of Japanese-American leaders in the United States and to have them participate 
and lead efforts for the Council's mission. Tomodachi for Tohoku continues to be an important Japanese-American-led initiative, as well as the Silicon Valley Japan project led by Professor Daniel Okimoto, who is networking Japanese corporations to Silicon Valley. The U.S.-Japan Council will continue to build on the foundation created by organizations like JANUM. So back to you, uh, Yuko. Thank, thank you, Paul. Um, it, um, I can feel that there is uh, been a mutual interest um, by Japanese American community, Japanese American leaders to work closer, uh, more closely with Japanese businesses and vice versa. So let, let's, let's talk about the future um, because we're now under the new, uh, in Washington DC, we, we have the new president, the Biden administration, um, and uh, have come up with a number of initiatives and there are uh, new potentials for opportunities of uh, collaboration between Japanese businesses and Japanese American community and uh, their, their leaders. For example, as Consul General was talking about, uh, Japan has advanced technology of hydrogen energy and Toyota has developed hydrogen fuel cell technology and uh, truck powered by hydrogen fuel cell that have been introduced in this, uh, the ports of Los Angeles and, and um, um, and uh, Long Beach, um, and there are other things as well. And uh, I know that we probably would not have much of uh, the time for Q&A, but one of the uh, people who um, is asking uh, this question about the specific blueprint for uh, the um, collaboration. Um, so um, it's not limited to green, clean technology or advanced uh, science, or uh, it could be more grassroots people to people, but I, I'd like to, i like you to, um, say, um, express your, your perspectives. So um, do, do you want to go first, uh, Yuichi? Okay, sure, yeah. Um, the basically, um, the, um, the Japan and the Japanese corporation, they want to create a farm base in the United States. That is uh, what I believe. Um, so at the cornerstone of U.S.-Japan relationship, uh, the Japanese-American community uh, certainly has an influence. On the other hand, the Japanese companies are able to support the effort by Japanese Americans to maintain their identity. Um, so like the, the creation and the dynamics of a partnership has evolved over time. So in the past, that the, the uh, connection with the leaders on the both sides has a major cornerstone. But nowadays, I strongly believe that a uh, real powerhouse, as mentioned, is the like, uh, uh, grassroots connection. So uh, I like to uh, have a connection at the individual level. I know this circumstance is very difficult to have a, a, a strong connection uh, personally, uh, but uh, um, at the few future, uh, especially among the next generation, a uh, connection at the individual level or the key driver. And, uh, for the business uh, of the hydrogen society, uh, it is very critically important uh, to think of uh, environmental uh, effects. And also, I uh, understand that California is a leading uh, state of uh, thinking of the uh, uh, clean energy. Uh, so uh, Japanese uh, companies uh, may have the chance of entering into the market if it's just the business uh, can, is uh, growing. So uh, I hope that uh, the government will uh, think of uh, offering subsidies and uh, other kind of incentives to support industry. And also, um, the demand creation is a key driver, uh, not only uh, creating an infrastructure, uh, demand creation is a key driver of for booming the business. So other uh, financial institutions, uh, MFG Unibank is working to our part in realizing the hydrogen uh, society for greater good. And also, uh, we, we need to think of uh, deepening our partnership with Japanese American society uh, in our journey. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. The bank, can, the bank can offer a lot, um, not only to Japanese businesses, Japanese ranking community, but uh, for bilateral relationship between the two. Uh, did you want, Paul, do you want to go next? Sure. You know, so these are very interesting times. You know, from a non Paris Accord position Republican administration to a climate change focused Democratic administration, you know, many people and businesses are trying to figure out how to properly transition and engage with the new Biden administration. For Prime Minister Suga and the Japanese private sector's interest in climate change related infrastructure and technologies, it becomes critical to work hand in hand with the United States as a means to establish global standards 
as well as gaining entry into the lucrative American market. You know, the USJC, JANM, and many JA-driven organizations have historically aligned itself with the Democratic Party and still enjoys many meaningful relationships with key members of the new administration. And fortunately, we expect climate change adaptation offerings from Japan to be of the highest quality and most likely second to none. And so the JA community assisting in providing information and access for Japanese companies should result in a win-win for both countries. Now, the Suga administration are advocates of the use of hydrogen as a valuable energy source. In my opinion, if the government and private sector of Japan work hand in hand on an initiative, I would bank on their success and accordingly would be more than pleased to be an advocate for them in the United States. Now, you know, it's true, the J community is not currently blessed with influencers of the stature and seniority of Senators Inoue and Matsunaga, other people like George Aratani. But looking ahead at our up and coming Yonsei and Gosei talent, I am certain that it's a matter of time. And it is important that we have JAs in the highest level of business and government so that we could be well represented and understood for a unique heritage and culture, much which is the same with the people of Japan. So I would like to ask the Japanese companies that are participating in this conference today to join us, JANM, the US-Japan Council, and other JA organizations in developing the next generation of Japanese American leaders. Be part of the effort as it has much to do with your company's future success in the United States, as well as a future relationship between our two countries. Uh, thanks for letting me share. Well, thank you, Paul, for very encouraging and exciting comments. Um, uh, really a lot to look forward to the future. Um, so Tracy, um, how about that? I'll be brief knowing that our time is limited, but I'll just build on the comments of Yuichi-san and Paul. I think Japanese companies, if they can continue to support JA students to have exchanges and recognize that they have more opportunities for global learning, I think that that is a great way to see the interest in Japan. And as these students evolve and develop into the business leaders or government leaders, they will have that passion. Because I, what I do see with other countries that have more recent immigrants, whether that be Korea or China, they have a stronger tie to the home country. So we need to have both cross-pollination. There aren't as many Japanese nationals studying in the US and vice versa. Um, so I would encourage that and also recognize that there are more mixed race uh, students and children that have an appeal. I mean, they do view Japan as cool, um, but how do we draw that relationship and have that pipeline of JAs that will grow up to be the future leaders as we have? So I would encourage that, as well as to replicate the success that USJC has had of hosting uh, the Hawaii Economic Summit, the Texas Economic Summit. Why not have one in California and do some introductions between Japanese companies and local companies here with the assistance of JAs in the network through JANM, USJC, and the relationship with JBA and JAS. So I'll just leave that as a thought, Yuko-san. Well, thank you, Tracy, so much. Um, well, one of the, the questions is like, how, how can Japanese American young professionals bring value to Japanese corporations today? And, and I think part of uh, the, the question has already been answered by you. And Japanese companies are trying to globalize. And uh, maybe internship is one, one way of um, making it a reality. Um, think globally, act locally is something that you also mentioned as well. Um, we are out of time. Uh, I think that uh, we can carry on uh, the conversation for another, at least another hour. So uh, probably we, we hopefully we would be able to um, continue on with this kind of webinar in the future. But one thing uh, that I feel that um, the late Irene Hirano, in a way, 
used to say that Japanese Americans are not um, uh, the, the bridge between Japan and United States. They are bridge builders. They are actors and players on the bridge because bridge is static, but we are not. And it's the same thing can be said about Japanese and Japanese business leaders as well. And it can be bridge, there's not only one bridge, can be the bridge that connects um, between Tokyo and Washington DC at the higher le uh, political level, can be made on a much more grassroots, uh, grassroots levels. Um, I know that more Japanese people are much more interested in learning about the history of Japanese Americans. Many people come, whenever they, they come to LA, they don't just go to Disneyland or Universal Studio or Hollywood um, Walk of Fame, but they go to, they come to Japanese American Asian Museum. So it, it's uh, fundamentally important to keep doing what the, the, the Janam has been doing to kind of depart the, the history experience of Japanese Americans and through that importance of democracy. Uh, so these bridges kind of are intertwined and intersect and, and all of us can make contribution can be a player on any bridge that we have. And um, with that, I, I thank you all so much for sharing your thoughts today. We have a um, lot to, to have learned and a lot to digest over this weekend at least. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yuko. Thank you to our panelists, wow. What an amazing conversation that was. I just wish that we had, I wish we had much more time to be able to dig into to some of these issues. But it really was inspiring to hear from, from each one of you, um, you know, the insights that you bring to the strength of the relationships to, you know, the foundations on which these relationships are built. And, you know, thank you, thank you for your leadership. You know, each one of you over the years have given extraordinary leadership in, in this area. Um, you know, and it, it certainly gives me great hope um, that, those, that those relationships will continue to be built. And I was so taken by the remarks about the importance of building that capacity and building, um, building leadership of, of younger leaders. Um, and certainly I know that you have, all of you on this panel have very, very strong shoulders, and I know that you will offer them gladly. Um, to, to the next generation as, as they step up. So, you know, thank you again to the Consulate General of Japan um, in Los Angeles, the Japan Business Association of Southern California, all of our speakers, of course, Secretary Mineta, Consul General Muto, Tracy Doi, Yuichi Mitsumori, Paul Yonomine, Yuko Kaifu, and Consul Koji Imai. You know, what I would also like to say and just sort of take a point of privilege here is that, you know, it's, it's, I was so, I was so touched through all of this. And I just think of how important all of these relationships have been to Janum, all of the relationships that we've had with um, Japanese companies. Um, but certainly our relationship with MUFG Union Bank and Toyota has been particularly important for us. And it, it brings to life the depth of, of these relationships relationships. Um, so we're just so deeply grateful to, to both those of companies. So on we go. Um, we know that we will have more conversations. We know that we will do a lot more work to continue to build and to strengthen these relationships. Um, and I hope that you'll continue to take the time to be part of Janum. Um, we're closed to the public, but we have a very, very vibrant life in the virtual space and our Janum from Home initiatives, um, which you can find on our website. Um, you can also enjoy all of this safely from your home. And I hope that you will join us for our annual virtual gala on, on May the 1st. So it's, it's for me to thank you all for giving up your time this afternoon. And I know that these conversations will continue. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Mm-hmm. 